Welcome to Real Vision's Trade Ideas. Today we're sitting down with Steve Straza of The Chart Report. It is great to have you back. Thanks for having me. So we've had actually a fair amount of Real Vision contributors come on uh, from Greg Weldon to Peter Bookvar and talk about the breakout that we've seen in gold. And so far, a lot of contributors have been fairly bullish on this rally. I'm curious as to where you stand and what you see going on right now in the gold markets. So we're bullish gold, uh, definitely. On June 20th, it broke out uh, about above the 1375, 1380 level which has been a critical level of resistance for about six years now. So now that we're above that level, we're definitely erring on the bullish side. And I have a trade idea today that's in the gold space. But I wanted to talk a second about, like you said, a lot of technicians and a lot of investors are talking about gold broadly. And at the chart report, that's what we do. I call it the top technician, top down analysis strategy. So what we do is we look at top technicians, we see what are the themes that they're talking about, and we see how can we express this theme into a trade idea or a, a trade setup. And that's what we've done with gold. We see a lot of people talking about it. So now we've kind of dug in. I'm going to share some risk appetite ratios with you today, and I'll share a vehicle that we're going to use to express our bullish thesis in gold. Now, in terms of the technicals, I mean, just looking at a basic gold chart, I can understand why the technicals might look good because we are seeing a breakout. Um, but stepping back and taking a look at the macro picture, I mean, stocks are near all time highs. The dollar is fairly strong, given the fact that we might see a Fed rate cut. Um, unemployment is still pretty low. So why would now be the time to be looking at gold? Our bullish thesis on gold has nothing to do with the economy crashing, stocks going down, anything like that. This is isolated to gold, the precious metals complex. We're seeing bullish price action. Um, stocks and gold can go up together. We've seen it many times throughout history. Gold and the dollar, they don't typically go up together. Um, so I guess our bullish thesis on gold really has nothing to do with equities at all. I think you could be buying equities right now, and I would be, as hmm. they're all resolving to the upside. And I think you could also be buying gold. And you're diversified in that way, so it's a great way to hedge. So then is your thesis, it's a lot of it's predicated on weakness in the dollar specifically? That's one of, um, I'm going to share like five characteristics today that I think you want to pay attention to and make sure are in place. Um, and if they are, I believe that we're in the beginning of a new secular bull market in not just gold, but precious metals. Okay, so starting out with the first out of those five things that you're gonna talk about, uh, what do you see going on with the dollar? So we wanna see the dollar roll over here, stay below that critical 98 level, which has been key resistance for more than a year and a half now. It failed to break out twice earlier in the year, a few months ago, and then it recently broke its downtrend line, going back to early 2018, and now it's back in retesting that key 98 level again. We wanna see it roll over and fail here. That would be very bullish for gold and commodities more broadly. Okay, and so then um, moving on from that, in terms of other precious metals, what are you looking at there? So when we look at gold breaking out, we want to look at the entire precious metals complex and make sure kind of everything's clicking, that we're hitting on all cylinders in order for this to be a true um, new long-term breakout. So when you look at gold, you, you see a lot of very bullish price action, but silver's been lagging, and that's been a concern. Palladium has been doing very well for multiple years now, so that's been the leader in the space. Platinum is finally looking like it's picking up. Uh, so what I brought with me is a custom index of equally weighted precious metals. So that's all of them, platinum, palladium, gold, and silver. The one we're most concerned about is silver. We'll often also look at a ratio of gold to silver to kind of gauge that outperformance or underperformance from silver. And the reason that we do this is I'll liken it to um, last time I was on, I said frontier markets are to develop markets as micro caps are to large cap stocks. They're the riskier, you know, they're like the ugly stepchild. That's what silver is. Um, gold bulls or gold bugs can get pretty crazy and pretty bullish on metals uh, during bull market periods but the silver bugs are really where you know the true crazies hang out. So if we see silver working uh, and moving to the upside, that's just a risk on signal for the entire space that all metals should really be working in that environment. Okay, and we haven't really seen as big of a breakout in silver right now. So what do you see going forward here? So we finally just got a breakout of a multiple year downtrend line in silver. So that's something, nothing like gold. Gold is at new six year highs. Silver is still facing overhead resistance, even from their year-to-date highs, uh, I think, which are around the $16 level. So we want to see silver 
continue to break above this downtrend line, see some follow through, take out those year to date highs and keep moving higher. And the way we really want to see silver performing well is relative to gold. So we want to be paying close attention to either the gold to silver or the silver to gold ratio. I brought a long term chart of the gold to silver ratio and that'll show you it's at pretty much nosebleed levels. Historically, uh, it's rarely been over $80 an ounce, gold over silver, and it was briefly in the 90s and it is right now. Uh, it doesn't seem to hang out at these types of extreme highs for very long. So what I then did was I inverted the ratio using popular ETFs, SLV and GLD, and you could see silver to gold, silver relative to gold, we have a nice bullish divergence and momentum as price just undercut some key lows. So I think you're starting to see that ratio thaw out. And if we could get a failed breakdown and see prices reverse to the upside here, that'd be incredibly bullish. And to me, that'd be another feather in the hat for precious metals bulls. And that would be a sign that this rally is really going to have legs. Okay, so seeing silver specifically rally um, in regards to gold, yeah. that's going to be big for precious metals overall. Yes, and it's also important to point out that that's not just bullish for silver, that's also bullish for gold. So even though silver will be outperforming gold, if you look at the longer term chart that I marked up with red and green, it shows the zones, it shows times when silver was outperforming, so that gold to silver ratio was falling, and you can see silver rising in the lower panel each time. And if you were to chart gold in that lower panel also, even in periods where silver is outperforming gold, you're gonna see gold rising. So it's good for the whole space, really. So in addition to the dollar weakening and seeing silver outperforming, what other factors are you looking at? Right, so we want the dollar to be weak. We want gold to stay above that key resistance level. We want silver to keep moving and working to the upside. We want the silver to gold ratio to reverse and uh, begin a new uptrend. But then we also look at another very important risk appetite indicator in the precious metal space, which is simply the gold miners performance relative to gold. So you can easily chart that with GDX, which is a popular gold miner ETF. And if you chart it over GLD, you'll see that it's been in quite a downtrend for some time, but it's finally basing. And we're starting to see this break a nice downtrend line and start moving to the upside as well. So that's similar to silver versus gold. We want to see that investors are buying gold miners at a more aggressive rate than they're actually buying spot gold because that's the higher beta leverage trade in the space. And it shows that those animal spirits are really alive and well. So that people are taking on more risk. In Absolutely. Space. And you can even take it a step further, same exact concept, but you take the junior gold miners, which are really like venture capital firms. They're literally looking for gold in the ground. <laughs> and if they're being capitalized and they're moving to the upside and working, then it means that there's a lot of bullishness in the space and that sentiment's really good. So you see those junior gold miners actually outperforming the gold miners, uh, and that would be GDXJ. And the gold miner ETF GDX is really gold producers. These are companies that actually have already hit gold. They have gold. Uh, they're often paying a dividend. They're mature companies. While the miners are really the, they're like biotechs. So right now, um, we've seen this rally in gold. Do you see that as a sustained breakout? Are we now in a new bullish cycle for gold? Or is this simply a short-term trend? So I, I think that's still a big if. Um, but I think that this is a very um, timely thesis in the sense that we're just seeing these risk appetite indicators that we just talked about. We're, we're seeing them bottom out and start to move higher. And if that happens, then to me, I would say, yes, we're in a new secular bull market for precious metals. This will be a one to three year thing at least. And you'll probably see gold move back to all time highs, um, potentially silver also. And I think in that scenario, you'll see the gold miners go too. But it's very important to just keep in mind, you only want to be in this trade for the long term. And it's only going to be a long term uh, bullish trade if all these five things are working. So how would you go about trading your thesis? I think that GDX, the gold miners ETF, is really an excellent way to do it. It's a leverage play, it's higher beta, you'll make more money on this than you will if you just are long gold. For example, I think GDX is about 140% off its all-time high still. So in order to get back there, if you use that resistance level that I'm talking about, which is about 2550, 2525, it gives you about a 17 and a half risk reward ratio. Okay. And you would consider buying that even now, even though we've seen somewhat of a run up? Yeah. So there's a couple ways you could play it. If you're going to hold on um, long term and 
all the risk appetite indicators that we're talking about and silver and the dollar rolls over and everything kind of plays out the way we want it to, I think, yeah, you can continue buying weakness all the way back to all time highs. Um, and that could be a while. There's other more tactical ways to play it. If you wanna wait for prices to potentially retrace back to our risk level closer to 25, 25, 25, 50, then you can get long there again and play a tactical trade just back up to 2016 size. And then we also have a 62% Fibonacci retracement, which I have on the GDX chart. You could also use that as a price target. So there's a couple different ways that you could play this, but I think the bottom line is that this is a brand new secular bull market. So it's gonna take some time to play out. There's gonna be some backing and filling and we could be buying weakness and betting on much higher prices over the long term if we're patient. And where are you putting your stop loss on this? Uh, the 25, 25, 25, 50 resistance level in GDX that they finally just resolved above. And then in terms of time horizon, you're in the long run. This is one to three years yes. that you see it hitting the target. If you don't wanna put on a more tactical trade, and like I said, right now, I think we have about 15 to 17%, depending on where the current price is, back to uh, the 2016 highs. You could play that as a trade and maybe buy weakness back towards the 25 level so that your risk is a little uh, more well-defined on the long end. So you could you could definitely craft a tactical trade out of it. But personally, me, seeing all these risk appetite indicators turn bullish, I'd rather be in it for the long run, not try to pick spots um, and just kind of buy and hold and, and accumulate on weakness as we go. What do you see as the biggest potential risk to this trade? If silver doesn't start working here, or if the miners don't keep working, um, what looks like failed breakdowns right now and whipsaw moves that are gonna resolve higher, they could actually turn into prolonged downtrends. Um, and if we do see that happen and you do see silver, again, silver's been outperforming for about a week now. It's been underperforming for months ahead of this. Uh, even as gold had showed, shown strength earlier in the year, silver was not there. So we need to see this actually turn into a sustained move from silver. I think that's your, your biggest risk. And you wanna see the miners continue to work. As long as those things happen and the dollar remains below 98 and is sideways or in a downtrend, um, this trade's gonna keep working. All right, can you briefly recap your trade thesis as well as the trade on GDX? Sure, so for this trade thesis to be in play and for it to work for a multiple year time frame, like we talked about, we wanna see the dollar continue to roll over, stay below 98. We wanna see gold continue to break higher, stay above that 1375 breakout level. We wanna see silver do the same thing and move above, move above those year to date highs and begin a new uptrend. And then we also wanna see silver start outperforming gold. That's very important. And we wanna see the miners outperforming gold. And the riskier miners, the junior miners, outperforming the less risky miners, the gold producers. So if all those things are happening, and I've brought all the charts that you could look at to check on these things, then you wanna be long gold. And I think you wanna express that bullish thesis through uh, the ETF GDX, right? And the reason why you wanna do this is because there's still uh, a lot of room back to highs. So you could do this in a number of ways. I would define your risk at that key resistance level that's now support that we've talked about at the 25, 25, 25, 50 level. Then you can either um, play the move in GDX up to the 62% retracement, which is at, at about $45. That gives you about an 8X risk reward ratio. Or you can play it all the way back to all time highs, which if you limit your risk at the 25, 50, 25, 25 level, it's about 8% of downside. Uh, that'll give you about a 17 and a half X risk reward. Okay, great. Steve, thank you so much for breaking this down for us. Thank you for having me. So Steve is bullish on gold. Specifically, he likes buying the gold miners ETF, ticker symbol GDX, at current levels with the stop loss at 25.25. His initial target price is 45 and he sees it breaking through all time highs over the next one to three years. Just remember, this is a trade idea and not investment advice. You should do your own research, consider your risk tolerance and invest accordingly. For Real Vision, I'm Justine Underhill.